If you're ho ho hoping to visit Christmas markets in Europe this year, be sure to watch this video first. Because as magical as Christmas markets are, they can also be stressful and confusing to plan for. But don't worry, in this video we'll be running through the top must-knows before you visit Europe's famous Christmas markets. From practical advice to lesser known hacks that will make your experience as smooth as possible. Now hit that cheesy intro. Hi everyone, it's Christina from happytowander.com, back again for more Christmas market fun. This channel is all about practical travel tips for Europe and beyond, so be sure to hit subscribe if that sounds like your kind of thing. And stick till the end to get a free printable packing list for winter in Europe. Now, I've been to dozens of Christmas markets across Europe over the years, and today my goal is to make you a Christmas market pro with my must-knows and prepare you for the most magical trip of your life. If you are lucky enough to be headed to Europe this Christmas, leave a comment with where and I'll be sure to chime in with more tips if I can. Now, on to the tips. First off, do your research by using Google Translate to search in that local language. Oftentimes, when you're traveling to a country where English isn't the main language, the best and most up-to-date information about Christmas markets will, of course, only be available in the local language. So what I would recommend you do is firstly type in the name of the Christmas market on Google Translate, get it translated into the local language, and then search that up on Google. I like using Google Chrome as my internet browser because it has translation automatically built in, so you can just click and then translate it all into English. Be sure to also look in the corner of every website and double check the local language version of the site as well, which is often more thorough and more up to date than the English version. Tip number two, know the traps when it comes to Christmas market dates. There is no uniform rule across countries or even across one city as to when Christmas markets will open, which creates a bit of a logistical mess when you're trying to plan. Dates are never the exact same each year, nor are they consistent across places. And it is surprisingly easy to get dates wrong when researching for Christmas markets, so here are a few tips to make sure you get them right. First, always look for official event websites to confirm dates. Oftentimes, the results that come up first on Google are websites that are not run by the official event organizers, and therefore, they're mainly based on second-hand information. This means information can become outdated or inaccurate, so be sure to cross-reference dates with official pages like the organizer's website or the official tourism board for that destination. Second, be mindful of closure dates. Often, Christmas markets have closure dates that aren't immediately obvious when they show their dates in a range. For example, most Christmas markets will actually be closed on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, even if they list their dates as extending past Christmas. And in Germany, there are markets which open earlier in the season that are always closed for Totensonntag, aka the Sunday of the Dead. Third, remember that most cities have multiple Christmas markets which can have different opening dates. Often we have a tendency to refer to Christmas markets as the Munich Christmas market or the Frankfurt Christmas market, but it's helpful to know in your planning that in most major cities, the Christmas market scene is actually made up of several independent markets, which can open and close at different times. Of course, because my goal is to make travel easier for all of you, I've created a resource over at christmasmarketsineurope.com that has detailed lists of Christmas market dates broken down by country, along with links to whatever official websites I could find. So feel free to use it as a resource when you're planning. Tip number three, consider traveling midweek if you can. If you have the luxury of flexibility, be sure to plan your trip so that they happen midweek. This is because weekends tend to be incredibly chaotic and busy, sometimes to the point where you can't even see the stalls or enjoy your time without drowning in a giant festive cuddle puddle. Another perk of going midweek is that flights tend to be cheaper. I do have a video all about finding cheap flights to Europe, so be sure to give that a watch if you want to learn more. Another important tip is you should plan to mix up your itinerary. Whenever overseas visitors come to Europe for Christmas markets, they tend to focus on the biggest and most famous Christmas markets that they've heard of. Of course, these markets are famous for a reason, but some of the most charming Christmas markets in Europe are the ones that take place in smaller towns. This is why whenever I plan a Christmas market trip, I like to base myself in one city and then do day trips out to smaller towns or villages to round out my experience. On a similar note, I also try to find unique markets nearby, as the big ones can get a little bit samey after a while. There's often smaller craft fairs or medieval and Nordic-themed markets in every city, so be sure to dig around and try to find some special ones to mix up your itinerary a bit. Tip number five, look into passes for public transportation in that region. Now, this tip is more for Germany specifically, but I know these offers exist in other countries as well. If you are planning on traveling to many markets in a day, be sure to look into regional day tickets. 
In Germany, these are available in each state, meaning you can pay one set price and get unlimited regional train rides in one state for the day. This is great for Christmas market hopping because you can do a bunch of rides for one set price without needing to pre-book, which leaves a lot of room for spontaneity. Now for our final tip in this section, book experiences and tickets in advance when needed. With a few exceptions, most Christmas markets in Central Europe offer free admission, meaning you don't need to pay to get inside. But oftentimes there will be components and activities within these Christmas markets that require booking in advance, like seating areas, fun workshops, or festive activities. So be sure to sleuth around on the event's official website to see if there are any must-dos that require booking in advance. Now let's move on to the next section. I'll start with the things that nobody ever tells you to pack. First, be sure to bring a tote bag or a small bag with you. These are incredibly helpful for holding your market purchases without needing to bring a big bulky backpack, as many vendors don't actually give bags for smaller items. Also be sure to bring sanitizer wipes or baby wipes. The truth is Christmas markets can get sticky and sometimes napkins just don't do the job. Plus, you might want something to wipe the mold shame off the mugs before you pack them. Lastly, bring a reusable water bottle. Whereas in North America, there's often free water on site at events, whether it's through refillable stations or just provided at the event itself, this is a lot rarer at European Christmas markets. So if you want to stay hydrated, then it's best to bring your own bottle just in case, or of course you can usually buy a bottle of water while you're there. Just know that it won't be free. Now onto some tips on specifics to packing your suitcase. First, be sure to pack layers for warmth. You'll be changing up temperatures a lot during your Christmas market visits, going from indoor to outdoor quite frequently. This is why it's crucial to layer for warmth rather than rely on a few bulky items. Good layering starts with a nice thermal base layer, and I can highly recommend the Heat Tech line from Uniqlo as an affordable option. They're super thin, keep you incredibly warm, and don't take up too much space. Second, be sure to prioritize darker shades of clothing. Listen, I love a nice white sweater as much as the next gal, but the reality of Christmas market food is that it is incredibly messy. If you're packing light and need to prioritize certain items in your wardrobe, go for darker shades, because the last thing you want is a giant mold wine stain on your only sweater. Of course, if you can't resist the cutesy appeal of having light-colored clothes, then another hack is to simply pack a really big scarf. Think of it as a fashionable bib for catching spills and incidents. In terms of outerwear, try to bring a coat that is both waterproof and also has an inner pocket. The thing about Christmas in Europe is that the weather can be incredibly unpredictable. So while snow tends to be rare unless you're higher up north, one universal theme across most parts of Central Europe is that it can get very grey and very wet. Umbrellas can really be cumbersome to lug around in crowded markets, especially when it's windy, so I'd advise bringing a really solid waterproof coat with a hood for protection. If you only have space for one coat, make sure it is waterproof. Also, try your best to bring a coat with an inner pocket so you can keep your valuables close with ease and also provide ease of mind when it comes to pickpockets. Boots-wise, comfort is key. Unless you're going to Christmas markets in Northern Europe, you likely won't need full-on snow boots, but it's important that whatever boots you do bring are warm and have solid grip on them, because those European cobblestones are no joke. Lastly, don't forget to leave space in your suitcase. If you're visiting Christmas markets in Europe, odds are you are planning to do at least a bit of shopping or hoard a million of those amazing Christmas market mugs. That's why it's very important to leave space in your luggage for all those amazing new goodies. I do share this tip in my How to Pack for Europe video, but if you want to save money on checked bags on your way there, you can always nest suitcases within one another, or pack a duffel bag or large backpack that you can use to haul your goodies over on the way home. That way you only pay once for the additional checked bag. As a bonus tip, if you plan to buy wine or other fragile goodies like mugs while abroad, you should definitely look into getting some wine protectors which come flat, but can be inflated with a pump to create the perfect cushioning for all your fragile goods. Now, let's move on. Tip number 15 is to get the Google Translate app installed on your phone. Depending on where in Europe you're headed for Christmas markets, many vendors will speak enough English for you to get by. Of course, this isn't always the case, which is why it may be helpful to have Google Translate on hand. If you download a language for offline use, this means you can also use it without any data on your phone. If you find that interesting, I have a full video about helpful apps to download before visiting Europe, so be sure to give that a watch if you need more recommendations. Next tip is to pack light when you're visiting the markets. Bigger, busier markets can sometimes have restrictions on bigger bags during busy times, or at least there's sometimes security bag checks which can take longer if you're carrying a lot. So practically speaking, be sure to pack light because big bags can also get in the way in a crowded environment. Another important must know is to bring cash. While Christmas markets are increasingly becoming card friendly these days, especially in Northern Europe and the UK, by and large cash is still king at European Christmas markets, 
Plus, it just makes things easier for things like mug deposits. Small bills and some coins are a good idea, especially in Central Europe, as it's often customary to leave a tip for the bathroom attendants who keep the facilities clean. The next tip is to solidify your Christmas market strategy. This is a few tips rolled in one, so bear with me. Firstly, I'd recommend avoiding peak hours whenever possible, especially when people get off work because markets can be super congested. I'd also recommend shopping during the day when there's fewer people and more room to browse and then returning again at night to enjoy the atmosphere. Lastly, be sure to do a few laps before committing to buying anything because there are way too many possibilities for regular humans with limited stomach space, budgets, and suitcase room. So be sure to get a lay of the land first before you commit to purchasing. Doing a few laps can also help you learn to spot mass-produced goods. While it is romantic to imagine that all Christmas market vendors have handcrafted every single item themselves, mass-produced gifts are becoming increasingly common at Christmas markets, especially in larger cities. For some, this isn't a huge deal breaker. After all, a nice ornament is a nice ornament. But if it's important to you that your purchases are handmade locally, then walking around first can help you spot which items are probably mass-produced as they tend to appear over and over across stalls and markets. Another practical tip to keep in mind is to set a meeting point in case you get separated. If you're traveling in a group, Christmas markets are the perfect place to accidentally lose each other. Plenty of people, plenty of distracting shiny objects, and a surplus of tasty hot drinks that will leave you a bit silly. This is why it's important to set a designated meeting point in case you do get separated, even if you do have phones because sometimes it's tough to get signal and the markets can be loud. And now finally for the most exciting part. I've already written an article with specific food recommendations, so I won't get too much into that, but be sure to give it a read before you go. Of course, you can never go wrong with mulled wine, potato pancakes, or sausages of all kinds. What's also important to know is usually at Christmas markets, food is eaten standing up while perched at a table. This is why it's crucial to pack light and wear comfortable shoes as you'll be standing quite a bit. Also, be mindful of deposits on cups. You know those adorable Christmas market mugs that you see in every photo and which haunt my cupboard? Most stalls will charge a deposit on those, meaning you will initially be paying a bit extra for the mugs. Of course, you get this extra deposit back when you return the mug, but just know that the cost up front will typically be higher than what you see on the sign, simply because of this additional deposit. So don't have a heart attack when your mold wine costs 8 euro. Last but not least, if you have food intolerances, definitely be sure to research beforehand what you might be able to have. Christmas markets aren't really the friendliest place for food intolerances, add in a language barrier, and it might be difficult to know which foods you can safely enjoy. This is why research is key, and also downloading Google Translate to avoid any misunderstandings. And there you have it, my top European Christmas market tips for those planning a visit, or those who are just nosy and preparing for the future. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around, and you can find that Winter in Europe packing list through this link right here. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Christmas market is, or where you might be headed this year. And for more practical travel videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.